Man-made climate change is, according to most scientists, happening now. Leading climate experts also agree that nations have to drastically reduce emissions of greenhouse gases released from fossil fuels and need to stop cutting the forests that absorb carbon dioxide. But the world seems to be moving in the opposite direction. The challenge today is how countries can improve living standards without wrecking the planet. In Climate Challenge, we scour the world for promising schemes and new technologies, both global and local, that might make a difference. While scientists, pressure groups and politicians wrangle over targets and treaties, Ordinary people are coming up with practical means to improve energy efficiency, save money and contribute towards climate stability. In Climate Challenge this time, we see how cleaner technologies are inspiring entrepreneurs to make money while reducing damage to the environment. In Sri Lanka, businesses from urban hair salons to rural farms are harnessing renewable power. Pedal power is liberating North Indian farmers from expensive and polluting diesel irrigation pumps. In Tanzania, making bricks fired with agricultural waste may save the last pockets of forest. And in Bangladesh, a microcredit enables 65,000 households and businesses to go solar saving 10 million litres of kerosene per year. Almost half of all Sri Lanka's population of 20 million have no access to the national grid. For villages in the interior, kerosene lamps are often their only source of light. A new initiative is financing alternatives and business is booming for those who've seen the light. Sri Lanka is a country of extremes, host to a luxury tourist industry and to one of the world's longest-running civil wars. Though only the size of Ireland, there are still villages untouched by conflict or modern development. In the south of the island, the only vehicles that can reach some remote farms are motorbikes. These farms are typical of the targets for Sabo Daya Economic Enterprise Development Services, or SEEDS. Formed in 1958, Sabo Daya is Sri Lanka's biggest charity. It gives credit for renewable energy systems and has financed 52,000 solar home systems. SEEDS provides the credit to cover installation costs and the savings in kerosene mean the loan pays for itself which is why Seed says only between 1 and 2 percent default on their repayments. Here, farmers are adopting solar power for domestic needs, but the solar systems are also protecting their incomes and their lives by stopping one of the greatest dangers to life and livelihood, the wild elephant squeezed by its loss of habitat. A horn wakes this farmer up when an elephant breaches the fence surrounding his crop. This farmer has rigged up an electric fence to deter hungry elephants. A more conventional use for the electricity simply means extended working hours for this family as they make cinnamon sticks. It makes a big difference. We have come to the light from the darkness. We can do more work and we can watch TV and looking after our child is easier with good light too. Even in town, there's a demand for solar power systems as a backup when the national power supply falters, which happens a lot in Sri Lanka. This barbershop runs entirely from a solar electrical system, despite having access to the grid. Okay. I get two benefits. We have a lot of power cuts, and when that happens, I can still carry on working. Also, it's cheaper. If it's not sunny enough, I can use the grid. But solar is my main system. The grid is backup. 
This jeweler's shop on the edge of town isn't even grid connected. Its owners prefer to rely on solar power. So even after nightfall, they continue to work with reliable light. We can work until 10 o'clock at night or so. And because of that, it's helped improve the turnover. Also, it means we can turn around orders quicker. And during the New Year holidays, we could work, but none of the others could, because during the festival period, there were a lot of power failures. But we had power and we worked. Solar panels are produced in an energy-intensive process, but within four years of operating, they'll have made up for this by generating clean power. An independent survey suggests that seed solar power systems save up to 19 million litres of kerosene a year and avoid between 40 and 47,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions.